Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, everybody. I got a big show today, D'Anthony. One of our faves is on the show. Uh, yeah. Neil Brown Jr. Man, I say that too much. I think I, I say the phrase is one of our faves way too much. But we do enjoy these people in real life. Like they're they're just good people. Yeah, uh, good dudes. Yep. We've had Neil on the show before. Mm-hmm. Very mm-hmm. very talented actor from uh, Straight Outta Compton. I also got him a Traeger grill. Did you really? Yeah. You motherfucker! Yeah. I, you didn't get me a Traeger grill. You didn't ask. Oh. Somebody I, I'm asking. Somebody on SEAL Team. I'm asking. Got now. one, and he was like, "Man, I'm fucking jealous." I'm like, "Oh, I'll just call our buddy." Yeah, I'll send you one. Well, great. I, I'm asking now. I would like a tra- my parents would like a Traeger. Uh, your parents don't have social I media. I bought so, my yeah. own Traeger. Yeah, but I'll repost mine. That's too bad. Uh, Neil Brown Jr. is from Straight Outta Compton, Insecure <laughs> on HBO, and one of our favorite shows, uh, SEAL Team on CBS yep. as well. We've had a lot of the cast members from that on. It's because we enjoy the show, and so do you guys. Yep. 80% of the audience is military and or first responder, and it's one of your faves. Therefore, it's one of our faves as well. And uh, Tyler Gray mm-hmm. is, is the producer on it. So One of the producers, yeah. You know. he's, actually, he's actually directed an episode, which is directed and acted in an episode, as well as being a, a technical consultant yep. on the fucking show. Yep, yep, yep. He wears many, many hats. Yeah, and he's a very, very talented dude. We love <laughs> uh, Tyler, and we love uh, Seal Team. So it's always mm-hmm. a pleasure when uh, anyone from the cast decides to do the show. Today is Neil. He's an inspirational dude. He's got a unique look on life. Life. Um, we didn't uh, get too much into acting today. We we focus more mm. on just life, man. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> about uh, what it's like having kids who are grown and now forced back into the house, uh, especially when they're in college. I, yeah. I didn't even think about that today. I mean, Neil's just a normal dude, anyways. You're not going to get one of those. Like he'll he'll dive deep on his preparation for acting and shit like that because I've talked to him personally about himself, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, when he just likes to, he's like he's just a normal dude from Florida. Great guy, hard worker. Yeah, dad was a marine. Yeah, man. that whole situation. Any actor who treats it like a profession, because that's what you should. Because it is. Yeah. Look, at the end of the day, it, it is a craft. Mm-hmm. However, I would say ninety five percent of the people who are in it don't treat it as mm-hmm. such. Um, I admire, and yeah. uh, he's certainly one of those guys. AJ Buckley, all those guys over there are uh, are hard workers at their craft. Um, before we hop into that show, we got some sponsors who pay for this whole shit wagon to be on the air. First and foremost, talking about ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 25% off, 25% off everything in the entire store, and you're getting free pillows. They make us say it like that. When you buy a mattress. Yes, they do, D'Anthony. It was weird. They were like, can you stop saying 25 like, in, like that? I'm uh, like, what do you mean like what? Yeah. Like, well, we want it to sound like Steve Urkel at the back end. I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. I'm not doing that, so that's why you're doing the read. So there we go. 25% off everything at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Finest mattresses on the planet. Also, they got a 36-month pay-as-you-go program. No interest on that. So if you're at home and you got that stimulus check and you're like, yeah, I'm kind of in quarantine for a few more weeks and I want to I wanna sleep comfortably, this will knock it down to like 25 bucks a month. Uh, it's great, man. And they're, I, th- I think they're going to do this deal all the way through the quarantine, which for most people, it should end around May 30th. Yeah. So uh, good on you, Ghost. I bed. think somebody extended to July or June 10th today. I don't remember who it was. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeesh. But it's like, they're just like, oh, we need, it wasn't here, was it? They're just like, oh, we need another month. Ugh. Gross. And it, cause it, it came out yesterday. So I don't know. Ugh. Stupid. Better not be here. Uh, uh, Fauci got on the, uh, got on 60 minutes and said, Hey, all you guys cruising around wearing masks all the time. Fuck that, man. You don't need it. Did he really? Yes. It's great. I'm tired yes. of it. I'm tired of the mass judgment too. He said, if you're not, uh, like a healthcare worker or a mm-hmm. cop or some shit like that, first responder, you don't really need to no. work because because all it's doing is one it's not blocking that much stuff and two it's like uh causing bad behavior like touching you're touching your face all the time now. yeah yeah so not only is this stuff that's going through the air hitting you in the face it's all the stupid shit you touch with your hands all day with your fidgeting without with your gloves stupid mask. yeah, yeah. It's dumb. stupid it's dumb uh you don't need that dumbness go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros <laughs> today next up we got expressvpn.com speaking of china forward slash drinking bros yeah Keep your China out, brother. Protect that digital butthole. I've had my entire, (laughs) I've had my my social security number has been compromised three separate times. By China. 
all well twice at least twice by China. The other mm -hmm. one we don't know, but it was uh, twice by China, once with Homeland Security and once with the military. Ah. And now there's a new one with the VA, and we're not sure who that is. That's a fun thing. It's all the government is incompetent. No, and that's why you have to have a fucking VPN, yeah. dude. Um, yep. It's it's almost mandatory these days. Only seven bucks a month. It's a seamless app that runs in the background of all your computers and digital devices, iPhones, iPads, uh, fucking soft tops, <laughs> yeah, hard, hard tops. tops. You it, name it. It's one of those things where if your identity gets stolen, then there's not a lot of burden of proof on you. Exactly. At that point, you're like, look, I've got ExpressVPN on all my shit. Mm -hmm. Give me my money back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The end. Because I've been in that situation before. It's like, well, how do you know you didn't blah, blah, blah? I'm like, because I got a letter from the goddamn department. I got a letter from the government. I got a letter from the Department of Defense letting me know yeah. that my shit been, had been compromised. That's how I know it's fucked. Goddamn right. So don't give me any lip. Seven bucks a month at expressvpn.com forward slash drinking bros. Uh, look, kids, you get three free months for free <laughs> if you sign up for a year. It is mandatory. Plus, you can beat all the firewalls at work. So you can watch porn. Um, you can watch yeah. uh, Netflix in other countries. Yep. And other countries, Netflix are the jam, by the way. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big Bollywood fan. Yeah, you're goddamn right you are. The fight scenes in those Bollywood movies are the funniest you shit I've ever seen them. in my life, dude. I, I, I highly recommend uh, having eight or ten drinks and then watching Bollywood fight <laughs> scenes. <laughs> They're great. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Like the guy, that one famous one where the guy's lifting weights or whatever, and he's like, He's throwing around like 305 pounds yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's nothing. And all of a sudden, he's slinging it around and hitting people with it. I love that shit. It's the best. It's the best. Uh, look, go to expressvpn.com today uh, forward slash stringer bros. Expressvpn.com forward slash stringer bros today. Get yourself a VPN. Uh, next up, we got killcliffcbd.com. 25 milligrams in every single can. 20% off and free shipping with the promo code drinking bros. Mm -hmm. um, look, killcliff is the only name you can trust in CBD. Uh, you can go down to your local head shop or, you know, go get one of those brown, dirty bottles of Chinese writing on it. Don't trust that shit. With KillCliffCBD.com, you will not piss hot. There is no THC in any of these cans whatsoever. So everything you're taking is on the up and up. It's KillCliff. It's a name you can trust. And it tastes great. No carbs, no sugars in this mogwai. Uh, my favorite is grape, but they got uh, mango, mm -hmm. and they also have uh, <laughs> orange kush, which, which that was the or original flavor. It was. Um, and uh, if you're not saying we didn't throw a lot of vodka in those things on Saturday nights, uh, you're wrong, because we mm -hmm. did. Enjoy the shit out of that UFC fight, by the way. It was my great. God, yeah. that was great. Yeah. Um, we had Kill Cliff CBD and vodka running all night long. Go to killcliffcbd.com today. Type in the promo code Drinking Bros for 20% off. Uh, they'll ship it uh, right to your house for free, too, with that promo code, which is great, man, because cans are expensive mm -hmm. when you ship. Um, and this knocks the price down a lot. Last but not least, we've got GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros. Boner pills. You know, the weird thing is, man, is we got a lot of messages saying, hey, dude, I feel like you guys have made it. Two of your sponsors, uh, Manscaped.com, promo code drinking bros mm -hmm. on that one, 15% <coughs> off. And uh, Roman, GetRoman.com forward slash Drinking Bros, were both in the UFC fight. Yep. Um, and everybody's like, what the fuck? And I mean, like, I'm hey, we try to tell you. like, yeah, Our audience is pretty similar to that, too. Yeah, we're on the come up, man. I it's can't a big show. It's over 9 million listeners. There can't be a lot of our listeners who don't like combat sports. No. I would I, think the majority of our fans like same. UFC. Same. Or just or sports in general, man. Now. I mean, look, it's been a long time since we've had any sports. Mm-hmm. And we're, uh, we're fortunate to have uh, UFC back. Even more fortunate to have some boner pills that can be shipped to you discreetly in the mail. Go to GetRoman.com forward slash Shrinking Bros today. Get some boner pills shipped to you. It comes in a discreet package. Uh, all you have to do is go online. You don't have to see a doctor. You get a little computer doctor there. Boop, 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 boop. Answer five questions. You're good to go. Free shipping uh, with that at GetRoman.com forward slash drinking bros and that's if you have erectile dysfunction or you just want an extra boner for the week dude yep. still great still great uh d'anthony yes we got a new clips channel on youtube yep um so go to <clears throat> drinking bros podcast uh clips channel and subscribe to that and that'll just give you highlights if you're too lazy to watch the video and subscribe to drinking bros podcast on 
YouTube. We need those subscriptions. That'll help uh, bump us up in the algorithm. And so will the reviews on iTunes. So please go on iTunes and rate the show uh, of Drinking Bros Podcast on iTunes. That will help move us up the charts and, and uh, help us with the algorithms as well. Jamie, let's get into the show with Mr. Neil Brown Jr., shall we? Yeah, welcome to Drinking Bros Podcast. Is it weird that uh, it's it's just afternooner and you're cracking open a White Claw? Um, look, man, no, it's not. <laughs> like, time has no meaning anymore. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Nope. Although things are starting to open up. Uh, we've also decided to have every single cast member for from our favorite TV show on. We got Neil Brown Jr. from yeah. SEAL Team on today. Neil, how's it going, man? It's going great, man. How you guys doing? Good. Fucking swell, dude. Things are starting to open back up. I'm having positive conversations with people from around the United States where they're like, man, I went to a mall for the first time or I went to a restaurant for the first time. Things are starting to get back to normal. Is it starting to get back to, to normal for you? Are you in L.A.? Yes, yes, I am. Um, you know, I mean, I'm a homebody anyway, so you know, it's just that when somebody forcing you to stay home is a little different. But um, I mean, it, you know, there's a few people outside and, and stuff like that. I'm I'm of the I'm of the school of uh, I'll let you figure it out first. Let me see how it <laughs> works with you, and then I'll come outside. How about that? It's like you don't want to be the first person to get you know reconstructive surgery on your face. You just want to let the first few get out there, let them do it see how it works out and then then maybe maybe yeah no i'm good i I feel like that with penile implants too where it's just like look you get the first couple inches and then you call me afterwards and let me know how that works out yeah 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 (laughs) and then i'll i'll maybe consider throwing on an extra two to the shaft but i need to see yours first uh i want to want to wish you uh congratulations man I, i just saw that seal team got renewed yep uh for a new season congratulations my man Thank you, thank you. We're really excited to uh, to keep it going. Yeah, yeah. now unless the uh, unless the world ends, you're going to be syndicated, syndicated after the season. So there you go. <laughs> well, that's you know, a big from deal. Lips to guys is. Yeah, we're, <laughs> but, was um, that was that is that in the back of your mind? By the way, absolutely. Yeah, I like money. What you say? I mean, no, I, it's like, uh, um, and you know, we get the five. That could be, but you know, right now we're just trying to knock out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fourth, which will be part of the end of the third that we didn't get to get to air, which right. I was really excited about, man. It was a cliffhanger ending. And, mm-hmm. But um, I think I think this will end up being better. Cause, you know, sometimes most of the, all the time, as far as I know, the adversity breeds uh, a special type of success. Yeah. And a different type of creativity as well, because now you have a little longer to sit on it and think about maybe something different you would have done as an actor. How odd is it that, like, you know, you're working your whole season essentially toward a cliffhanger, right? Or, or a season yeah. finale, and then it just gets nuked out. Um, what, are they, what are the writers talking about? Maybe starting with that the next season and then going into it? Because if you start it with a, a cliffhanger, man, that would be a banger of a season. Yeah, I mean, like who shot JR style? Yeah. That was one of the biggest news stories for six months. Yeah. <laughs> like continuously for six yeah. months. Oh, who shot Jr. Yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you remember that? Or who yeah. shot um, uh, who who shot uh, Mr. Burns as well? Yeah, uh, lesser, yeah, yeah. lesser, yeah. lesser known. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, any yeah, <laughs> it will. Um, you know, I know it was a challenge uh, for the guys, but uh, the, the the writers um, led by uh, Spencer Hutton, at our uh, our showrunner, um, with Mark Simos and and Kenny and and Jacob and all those guys, they uh, they they. And, you know, with our show, we get thrown so many curveballs consistently, most of the time on the day with only like five minutes left to shoot. And, you know, we always, you know, just like the operators around us, we improvise. So and, 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 and most of the times, more often than not, it comes out better uh, than it would have when we had all that mm-hmm. that time and energy. So um, I think they came up with something truly uh, spectacular. I've, I've talked to Spencer about it. Um, and it's i think it's even better i think it's even better i, I know it's they they didn't stop their their um the writers room kept going mm-hmm. yeah the writers room kept going you looked up and you yeah, got dog. dogs yeah that was, you look like the dog you got a pit bull or something the way you looked no, up he's you got a, fear he's got, in your heart he has the like, tiny was going to leap over the it's a, is it it's a tiny little dog yeah like mine yeah well, obviously you don't know the difference between 
spear and I'm going to break your neck. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in my look. Um, yeah, because of because uh, of the quarantine and, and Zoom and everything, we've got to find out way more about people's personal lives yeah. than, than – Look, yeah, and, and those mine, are, mine too. My wife's dogs. Oh, one second, please. I'm sorry. One yeah, second. I hate this. <sighs> Neil Brown's off camera strangling a dog right now. Don't don't tell the PR people. <laughs> My problem is with having everybody home. They all should be capable, um, but they're not. Like the son, the twenty, the twenty and the twenty two year old should be able to shut the dogs up and answer the door and, and deal with the guy that's going to fix the AC. Uh, <laughs> but they're all at, at my office, at my door. And um, <clears throat> just saying, we're, we're so sorry. And I'm like, what, what do you want? Yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> the guy to fix the AC. Let him fix the AC. Yeah, man. Let him in. I'm paying for uh, it. Not you guys. Um, let the guy know, in and fix the um, AC. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you know what? I tell you what, man. And, and, and I asked my son, I'm like, hey, maybe you shouldn't stay up. Listen, I get it. I've been there. But maybe you shouldn't stay up every night to four in the morning playing Fortnite or video games or whatever you're doing. Uh, <laughs> because there's going to come a time when you're going to need to pop up and be up and be ready and be cognizant and be in the Yeah. So, okay, that, okay, that doesn't do it. So now he's in, at my door panicking because he's like, yeah, mm -hmm. just waking up. What time is it? Uh, it's 11. Yeah, it's 11 out there. Well, I mean, look, you can hire a Kato. Just hire a guy that knows martial arts to attack him randomly throughout the day. Keep him on his toes. <laughs> yeah, keep him light. Uh, are they in college? Are the kids in college? Uh, yes, both of them. Nice. And so what, what are they off for yes. the the, uh, the quarantine and everything? Um, they're doing school from um, from home. Mm. Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, so they, 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 they do it online and stuff like that so how i mean he i mean he's been doing great but actually been um kind of really focused on on the schoolwork. i keep asking him i'm like hey what are you doing and he's like i'm already done he's, he's getting that stuff done way quicker because he wants to get to his yeah for sure training and video and well i mean i did uh <laughs> yeah. i did uh my master's online through at, at penn state really mostly it, like some of it i had to go over there for but mostly it was online and uh I was working full time for Homeland Security at the time too, but I was the same. Like, if you're a self motivated person, going to in classroom stuff, mm -hmm. unless it's something like our uh, producer Alec goes to film school, that's different. Right. Uh, but if it's like just writing papers and shit, like you don't need to be in classroom yeah. for that. Right. It's a waste of time and money. Yeah, I agree. I, I, you know, it's odd to think about that. You know, you have two grown kids in college and now they're home because of all of this. Like uh, the rest of us parents, like. You know, I got young kids, so it's like, all right, cool. One's in kindergarten, one's in preschool. Like, them being home is fine. The Zoom thing's a little weird, you know, doing kindergarten classes from yeah. Zoom. But uh, I never thought about it from the, the perspective of when you have kids in college. Like, yeah, why wouldn't they come home? They they're, they probably can't be in the dorms, right? No, 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 they can't. Um, I I was I just was just at my doctor's. Uh, last week and going by all the all the frat houses and uh you know they had banners and stuff there but they were empty they're all gone um dorms everybody, everybody's home so you know which is is interesting in this time of social distancing we actually have to come together um closer which is interesting <laughs> yeah know? uh let me ask you this because i read an article today that a lot of parents and students were pissed in college that they were having to pay you know, essentially thirty five, fifty thousand dollars a year for Zoom classes. Yeah, right. What if this continues yeah. for you? I mean, for real. Like, I mean, that's essentially an online class. Like, there is no room and board anymore. Um, there is no textbooks anymore. Have they said anything to you as a parent of like, hey, man, we're, we'll either refund you part of the money, or how are they going to work that out for the fall if your kids don't go to school? Because California is one of the the hardest hit areas. Yeah, it's interesting because there there have been um, checks coming in the mid, like small refunds of different things, mm. like you know parking and, and other smaller things. But uh, um, I don't know exactly uh, uh, how they're how they're going to handle that. I would like my money. Yeah, because I'm the know? same. Like <laughs> I, I'm I'm debating if if fall classes don't start for my kid, even though he's in like first grade. If it's on Zoom, man, I, I might just hold them back and then figure it out so when kids can go back. Because right now, 
teaching a kid on Zoom that age, like, they don't really absorb much. And it's not a full school day or anything, you know? It's like an hour, three times a week or whatever it is. And um, yeah. to, to me, that just wouldn't be worth it. Um, are, are any of your kids close to graduation? Are they going to miss their graduation because of this? No, 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 no. That's good. No, the, uh, the oldest, he uh, stayed back a year. He took a year off, you know, and kind of went out there and did his thing. And then, so he's actually a year behind. So actually he's right on par with my, uh, my younger son, who's uh, 20. They're 20 and, and 22. Um, but so far, uh, it's, it's been working out with him. I mean, they're getting stuff done quicker and they're getting kind of ahead. Um, they also have me busting in the door every so often. Like, hey, what you doing? Right, <laughs> you know, and to to stop me from I'm a strict dad, so to stop me from busting in the door, they're just making sure that I know it's already done and giving me the proof of said finishedness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do they want to be you actors? <clears throat> oh no, 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 no. That's no, good. No, 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 no. Probably, not. probably not, because they're in that stage in college right now where they're they're being challenged probably for the first time. If they're smart, they seem like they're smart kids. They're probably being challenged for the first time, and in, in your second, third year of college. So uh, yeah, then they yeah, see they, you then know, they, they see you they see you working uh, like these ten hour days for ten consecutive months. They're like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. That's too <laughs> it's too much work, man. Ten, ten hours. <laughs> wow. Yeah, right. I'm you being wish. I'm oh, being try sixteen, bro. I'm being yeah. kind. Try sixteen. <laughs> I'm being kind. I mean, 16, 12, 14. <laughs> Have you ever no, made them I mean, sit I, on I, set with you and be like, hey, man, this is what dad does every day, and it's it's sixteen hours. Um, Ethan, my youngest, I, I have. Uh, but he was with David's son. Um, so, you know, they just went off and, and had a blast. But he's like, yeah, dad, it's cool. You, you, I'm all right. I'm out. We're out. <laughs> <It's just laughs> um, you know, it's, it's hard work. I mean, my, my oldest son, um, he's really good with kids. He's really good. I mean, studying psychology and stuff like that. But uh, once his passion is, is music, he's a rapper. I feel like I failed him. <laughs> But, um, what do you mean you feel like you failed and you played DJ Yella in a fucking great yeah, movie? What did you, you, think, what did you think it was going to happen? His father's in NWA, the movie, the greatest rap movie like, of all time. What do you think he's not going to want to be a rapper? That's just such a deep uh, Yeah, you're welcome. Business. It's such a, you know, it's just <laughs> the talent pool is deep. I mean, in, in, in certain areas. It's MC, I mean, but I'm fortunate because he's an MC. Mm. So he's not like the, you know, yeah, mumble rap. He's not, he's not a pop. No, he don't do none of that. He's a, he's a, he tells stories to MC. So, I mean, if anything, I like, you know, his vocabulary increase and the way he, you know, comes up with um, imagery uh, through his, he's, a, he's kind of a wordsmith, actually. Uh, it's, they call him Conscious Prophet. Uh, but is that his social the, media? The young, conscious Prophet? Yeah. Yeah. Conscious Prophet. Um, and he's, and he's, he's, you know, I'm, I'm actually impressed, you know, because he stuck with it. I didn't think he had the drive because as, as a, you know, with this job and that job, nobody's going to push you. You got to get up. You got to be self-motivated individual. Yep. You got to push yourself. And, and nobody's going to tell you how it's, it's got to be done. Um, but he, I mean, he's pushed and he's persevered and um, his skill has increased. And uh, I may not agree with some of the language in some of his uh, music, but I'm sure my parents wouldn't agree with some of the language that I used on mm -hmm. the come up in acting, uh, especially when I was Mr. You know, Funny Man. Um, I could be very vicious with my words. Uh, um, but my youngest son, he wants to be a sports journalist and he's a, what he's wanted to do since he was 10 years old and he hasn't stopped. Wow. So at 10 years old, um, he wants to be a sports journalist. That's awesome. Yeah. He's a big Dick Shap yeah. fan. Yeah. Buster, he, Buster only fan. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Kirk. Yeah. By the way, Buster only was on uh, ESPN this morning with a, with a homemade haircut. So, oh God! Yeah, he, nah, it, didn't, it didn't work out well for Buster. It didn't work out. Didn't well work for out Buster. well. Huh? No. <laughs> he was like, "How do you, old, okay. yeah, yeah, it does." I mean, he gave himself. He he says he did it himself, and he, it's a fade, and it's not the worst fade I've ever seen. I mean, it's not great, but it's not the worst. Okay. And it's also it's not Buster oh, Olney's normal haircut either. I've never seen him with a fade before. <laughs> like he's got a typical white man, old white man haircut, but now yeah. now he's like rocking like <laughs> young twenties white man haircut, which is very different. Yeah. Well, look, with a sportscaster, that's something I feel that is achievable and you can go to school for it and everything else. Being in the entertainment industry, yes, yeah. you know how hard the rap industry is. I mean, that's. Oh, God. Because there's nothing. Look, here's the thing. And, and he and I talked about it. I said, look, if you're an actor, 
there's still stuff you can do even if you have what other people perceive as no talent you can still be an extra yeah you can still be background you can still be a stand in and that doesn't take anything away from their skill or not i mean it's just something if you're not getting the jobs over here you can do that to support yourself and 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 you can learn a lot from it if you're willing to do that and pay attention or you can just get a good hot meal and a little a little scratch um so there's always something to do uh even if you're a singer you may be able to do lounge singing, sing mm-hmm. backup for people, yada, 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 whoop, whoop. You can do a, a, there's jobs to be done. You know, that's what the chitlin circuit was all about. But, and you can develop your skill during that time. As a rapper, you know, what, a hype man? I mean, yeah. like, what is there to do that pays um, and, 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 and gives you a space to actually learn mm-hmm. to develop? Because we mm-hmm. don't even know what's, you know, what is skill in rap? I mean, because it's all subjective. Like people are listening to this, you know, the rainbow hair, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And the crap that's being said, I'm like, and this is hot. I, I can't, I can't listen to it. Burns my, I, you know, it Spe- burns my ball. The hairs. rainbow, the Speaking rainbow. The rainbow way, I'm sorry. Did you say it burns your ball hairs? Yes. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Just wanted to make sure everybody heard that. Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. No, definitely wanted a confirmation that your ball hairs were being burned. Um, <laughs> Yeah, Speaking I'm talking the, about my NBA, double my basketball. I'm talking about it's a hairy ball, and I and of no, course it gets burnt. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, speaking yeah. of the the rainbow haired guy, though, uh, <laughs> did you see his his uh, latest single? Uh, I did. Man, so I, did. I saw a piece of it. So you know, he gets out of jail, um, drops drops a single. It has 97 <laughs> million views. Shoots the video in his backyard because uh, his parole officer approved it. Has 97 million views in 48 hours on YouTube and is number one on iTunes uh, streaming across the land. It is called Gooba, G O O B A. And uh, what do you say? Like, what do you tell your kid when you see something like Takashi 69 happen? Um, like, what do you say to yeah. him? Like, hey, is this, this is rap today? Congratulations. You're going to have to do some shit like this. Or what do you do as a parent? What do you say? Because you're also a cool guy who knows the music scene, I would assume. Um, and keep... I know a, a, a little bit. <laughs> a little bit, okay. Um, like with anything, I say, you you know, you want to be famous or you want to be good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there can be two very different things. Uh, I, I said, do you love what you do or do you love the money and the, the fame that you think that you may get, you know, that you may or may not get? Um, and based on what you want from it, uh, act accordingly. If you want to be a, a great MC and you and you really want to live in the spirit of what rap was always meant to do, um, and be a wordsmith and be an MC, then it's not going to lead to that because people love to watch a train wreck. I mean, you, you see, the traffic is always messed up because somebody's watching somebody do something, and it, it's most of the time it's nothing, but they'll stop to watch and mess up everybody else's life just to watch this this thing, especially yeah. if it's somebody getting hurt, um, and. You know, why, I, you know, I don't take anything away from the, the kid. He did what he had to do. He wanted to be famous. He wanted to be rich. He wanted to be a, he's the Joker. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you, yeah. if you look at the movie with the Joker, you know, you had, you had these mobsters that needed this clown to come in and, and help them out. And he ended up burning their whole thing. <laughs> and that's kind of what Takashi's doing right now. I th- it's, it's a spectacle. It's, I think it says Joker, a lot. I, mean, I think it says a lot about you as a person that the Joker you decided to go with is the Joker from The Dark Knight. Yes, I think that says a lot about you as a human being that you didn't pick Jared Leto. Yeah, or Romero, whatever that guy is. Picked a good Romero. one. He picked a good one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Who else has played the Joker? Uh, well, I, I Joaquin picked, Phoenix just won the Oscar. Oh yeah, for it. yeah. Joaquin wow. Phoenix. Oh yeah, he won the Oscar. Yeah, you don't want to. I mean, go I, with that I picked. Yeah, I, I picked one who loved anarchy for the sake of anarchy, and um, um, which they all kind of do, but it, you know, Heath did it in a in a very maniacal kind of way that it was a spectacle, mm. and it was an amazing spectacle that people couldn't take their eyes off of, and. And that's what's happening, I think, with Takashi. You can't tell me, you know, his song, like his lyrics or anything. You can't, you know, if I asked you a Biggie lyric or a pop lyric, you could probably spit yeah. off some because they <clears throat> they stick to you. They have meat to them, um, you know. Uh, but 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 he admittedly is kind of doing the, the spectacle. He admitted mm-hmm. that it's a spectacle, and 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 people are watching it. And if, I said, if, if if my son wants that, then that speaks more about, you know, his character. 
um, and, and where he wants. Uh, and, and you got to be careful, man. You, you can't let your, your talent get you somewhere that your character can't keep you. Mm. And um, I just see a lot of that going on. It serves nothing. I always thought music was um, uh, a, a, a mouthpiece for the times and also to help push us in a, a new direction. You know, it would reflect what was going on and then push us in a new direction. New direction. That's why I love, you know, songs like, you know, Marvin Gaye, what's going on mm-hmm. and, and stuff like that from that time because it helped the nation heal. It also said what was, what was going on. So when you're rapping about essentially the stuff that a lot of these kids are rapping about, I don't know what purpose it serves. I mean, it's okay. Say what's going on, but then maybe put in a lyric about how you think it should be fixed. And most of them just say it's just not their responsibility to, to, um, to shape a, a nation or to shape their music to, to, to help the young people. But that's who's listening to the news. They are music. They are influencers. And if you're influencing anarchy for the sake of anarchy and the, the foolishness, I don't, I don't think it's going to serve your soul right, right, well, but you, you will be rich. And, you know, I guess money solves everything, right? <laughs> uh, man, it depends. If you have great friends and family, money really does solve everything. Um, <laughs> you already got a good foundation. You're like, yeah, the rest of it I could just buy. Like, I'd be fine with it. Um, but yeah, it's interesting that you touched on that because I'm trying to think. I think there's only two social conscious rappers that are huge, and it's probably Kendrick Lamar and J. Cole right now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, those are great. I don't know too many <laughs> others who are doing it and making a great living at it um, in that world. The rest of it yeah. is just. I, Drake, maybe, I guess, but Drake's like a pop star almost. Yeah, so Drake just tough. talking about his feelings, man. Yeah. <laughs> he just, he's like a pop star. He's just talking about his emotions. <laughs> yeah. He's like a pop star. Yeah. So it, it's hard because, you know, like your career, I, I think you're a brilliant actor. Um, you've worked your Thank ass you. off you. and it worked for 20 plus years, right? In acting. This is a, I would, I would assume, this is probably the biggest break of your career is getting a long TV show that will go into syndication and, pay for pretty much your entire life going forward, even if nothing ever happened after this. Um, knowing that, do you want to see your kids struggle the same way? Um, and I guess, what do you say as far as your journey goes and try to relate it to his? Well, absolutely not. I don't want to see him struggle, but I know he has to. Um, without that, you you won't become what you need to become. And and that's that's the that's the big joke that's sold to parents it's like you don't want your kids to have to work as hard as you you don't have to struggle for this and I'm like, but you are who you are because of your struggle because of that pain and because of what you had to go through and it made you and if you essentially baby them mm-hmm. and give them opportunities that they wouldn't have gotten any other way then they're probably not going to be deserving of those opportunities right. and they're going to waste it but how do you do um, that like uh us as you know we're not i none of us here are struggling financially Right. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. something that I grew up with, that we grew up poor as shit. So so I don't I don't know that there's any way to replicate that now. You were poor, you were broke. Yeah, yeah, (laughs) Yeah, true. (laughs) We were definitely broke. But I I don't know how you replicate that at this point. You know what I mean? Like we're we're, uh, affluent, for lack of a better phrase. Like, how do you replicate the struggle of how do you teach a a child the value of a dollar and and a hard day of work when you know, make them work for their allowance. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's 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 <laughs> make one. them work for their allowance, and if yeah. they don't have it, they can't put the internet off. Click, <laughs> so, you didn't pay your bill. I taught my. Is kids that what you do as a father? Yeah, is that what you do? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. They got to pay me rent. Oh really? Yeah, but secretly they don't know where that money's going. Their money's just going into an account for them. I'm just going to get back to them. But yeah, <laughs> as long as they, they they need to know right because they need to know how to budget. The most important thing you can teach a child, like and. and you know, like besides, you know, having a good heart, mm. you know, trying to teach them how to care for others and stuff, is to teach them about money and how money works. It's it it makes me so mad. You know, I mean, algebra is in all these schools, and they're never going to use it. But if you taught them about stocks and bonds, if you taught them about dividends, and that would serve a child, that would serve a, a young adult so much better than algebra. Mm, right. <laughs> um, and 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 teaching them the value of money and and how to make it stretch and how to work with and, and teach you that you know you're not for it you, you may be broke right now you have a cash flow problem but you can fix that if you're willing to work hard at it uh it is hard to replicate though because you see you know it, you know they have this nice house they have these nice things and they don't really have to they don't have to work 
right, it's something right. it's, it's, it's hard to teach them that they, they actually, in fact, do have to work for something. So um, I just uh, I did it in other ways. Uh, I didn't allow them like they didn't have TV uh, Monday through Friday unless they earned it. Um, so that was one of the ways that I taught them about the value of, of work. They had to do their work through the week, no television, no video games, no nothing, to earn the weekend where they could just play their five hours a piece and be, be happy. And uh, you know, they, they they did it. So they they learned how to work at, at stuff, like not, not on the level that I I had to. But, um, they did they they did learn the value of work, and 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 it wasn't. You know, I didn't start out with money. We were on the struggle for a long time. So they so they did see that. Um, but they didn't know that that we were broke at the time. There was one time, man. We, you know, me and my wife, we had we were like ten thousand, uh, ten eleven thousand dollars behind, uh, two months behind in all our bills, and we had fifty three cents in the account. And we were we were in the living room, and we looked at what we owed and what we had, and we just laughed, and we ended up uh, uh, turning on uh, um, uh, Jackie Wilson mm. and just danced. <laughs> we danced and laughed and. You know, we prayed on it, and I, I got to work, and then I got a residual check a, about a week later that put us over the moon. And I started really learning how to, to handle money and to stretch it and, and treat every, you know, a dollar like I was never going to work again. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, as much as, as important as it is to learn how to manage your money and shit like that, I think it's important to, like you were talking about before, just go through that. Because I don't know if there's another uh, – I don't know if you could ever replicate – going through a struggle where you don't know where your next meal's coming from or something like that or how you're going to feed your yeah. fucking family. Like you can't teach a kid mm-hmm. that cause they don't understand the weight of responsibility of a family in general. But then there's the other part where you have to be able to handle it like that. Like a lot of people, a lot of these kids these days. And I think one of the reasons we see more like low grade mental health issues these days is because people just don't know how to react to stress cause they haven't seen it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Growing up. Yeah, it's a, it's almost like herd immunization where you don't go through any real problems as a child. So once a problem shows up as an adult, you're fucked. Like you have no idea what to do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That is unfortunate. That's what I mean. That's why, you know, I think you got to get in the dirt. I think you got to struggle. Um, my oldest son put himself purposely kind of through it and uh, he was out there and you know, he didn't know what was going to happen. He lost all his money and he didn't want to ask for help from me. And so he, he went through it and he learned a lot from it. He learned how to appreciate this nice ass house. <laughs> like, all right, man, uh, if you would please, please, sir, allow me to come back home. <laughs> I will do things for your house uh, <laughs> that you cannot imagine. <laughs> and uh, they're, they're doing uh, really good. I mean, you know, that's why it's, it's hard. I, that's why I, I try my best not to judge people based on where they are where they are at that moment because they're all it's part of their journey and you know it ain't how you start it's how you finish um so you know uh, Saul had to go through what he had to be terrible to become Paul right so um you know and I had to be an actor who sucked the way I felt uh, to be a, an actor who was more believable so um I think there's so much value value in, in the struggle I it's, you know I just don't think you can replicate what we, I can't replicate what my dad went through. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, your dad yeah. was a Marine, right? Yeah. My dad was a Marine. My dad was a, a Marine in Vietnam, a big black man <laughs> <laughs> in Vietnam era. If you think about that time, <laughs> they did, he did not belong there. They did not want him. There. Um, but uh, he fought for a country because he believed in the country. Um, even if he didn't believe in the man next to him at the time. Uh, but he, he uh, fought for the guy next to him. Like, mm. like he loved him. Uh, even if that guy was would rather have him lynched, yeah, yeah, fact. yeah. It was a weird yeah. time. There was a lot of uh, I, some. A lot of people don't know this, but there was something like thirty or to thirty five thousand Japanese men who volunteered for World War II from internment camps. Really? Yes, that's crazy. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that either. Yeah, you. Uh, I don't know yeah. if you ever got to see the play that uh, uh, George Takei made, or uh, what the fuck? The was guy from name? Star Trek. Yeah, no, uh, George yeah. Takei. Takei. No. No joke. I don't remember the name of it, but it, the play was about his uncle. His uncle was one of those guys that volunteered. Really? To go to World War II. Yeah, so he oh, made wow. a whole thing about it. I can't remember the name of it, but it was on, I don't know if it was on Broadway, but I saw it in California. It was pretty good. And it's interesting to see, like you said, that was a good synopsis. They didn't necessarily believe in the current situation, but they believed in the idea. 
like no matter how that's that's one of the things that keeps people patriotic no matter how bad stuff seemingly gets in america we know that like we've got something to fall back on like this idea that we all agreed on is a pretty good idea and it's on us yeah, to make the this american happen. experiment is i mean i think i mean you know mm-hmm. that look I, I joke about this with my wife because you know we'll bag on on things that happen in America, in, in America, but those things are kind of based on people and people's perception of each other and how people treat each other and division, right? But the fact of the matter is, I, I, I say when you grew up, what was that place that you thought about living? Like you just, oh, if I just got there, life would be great. And she was like, I, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're saying. And I'm like. That place, that place that you said one day, I just want to build up enough money and go live there and I can make it and everything would be great. And she said, I, I don't know. And I asked uh, her homegirl, who is from the Philippines, I said, hey, where did you think of going? <laughs> to America. Yeah. yeah. I said, yeah. So does like everybody else. <laughs> and the reason why you're not thinking of, I said, the reason why everybody in this room who are Americans can't think of a place that they wanted to go is because you're in that place. So. For all of our faults, it's still, you know, one of the greatest nations in the world in the in the American experiment of American democracy of, of, of being free uh, is just, um, you know, the belief in that and us being the best we can and our most ultimate is still better than any place uh, mm. that I think that you could. Yeah, I agree. To, all of our know, fans live, certainly so. agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, uh, the more I hear about your, uh, you know, your, t- your come up time when you were younger, young actor. And your relationship mm-hmm. with your wife, especially because you guys got married young, right? Oh yeah. Like oh, yeah. you were nineteen or twenty, I believe. I was nineteen. I tried to marry her when I was eighteen, and she uh, <laughs> we went and got the certificate, and yeah. she I pissed her off when we were driving. She ripped it up through it. True story. True story. <laughs> I was like, That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was uh, I was um, filming. Uh, Tigerland was it? I think so. I was nineteen. So oh wow, I was, uh, nineteen, and she was yeah. twenty. Uh, you did Tigerland yeah. with uh, Colin Farrell, and that was kind of his his coming out party. Yeah, it was. It was. You know, it was like that was such a great movie, man. Yeah. We still have lifelong friendships from that movie. With my my cousin Tori Kittles, uh, whose show just got picked up, Equalizer, uh, with Queen Latifah. Mm-hmm. Um, He's your cousin, uh, Cole Hauser. Yeah, yeah, Tori's my cousin. Tori's a great actor. So is Cole Hauser. He, yeah, uh, he's have, have you seen yeah, Cole? Have you seen Yellowstone? Had you watched that show, Yellowstone? Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's one of the like. Yeah. There's so much good television going on right now. There is. It's a it's well, a great time for television. Horrific time for movies, but yeah, uh, great terrible. time for television. I wonder uh, yeah, what I, what I was going uh, at with that question before though is it seems like your SEAL Team character Ray Perry draws a lot off of your personal experience as a human being. Like there's a lot of similarities between your come up and his day to day struggle as well. So I wonder, is that just coincidence or is it something that, you know, writers get to know you over the years and start to work your real life into stuff or how does that work? Um, I was very fortunate that um, when I started doing this, uh, the guy uh, who created the show, Ben Cavell, um, and um, uh Mark Owen and all those guys, mm-hmm. when they when the idea of Ray came about, um, he was a you know strong guy who you know had a lot of faith and um, had a great marriage. Um, they imparted some things for me and allowed me to kind of like put some of some of my ideas about Ray because he's essentially my dad. Right. Um, I like I said, my dad's my hero, greatest man I've ever known, and. Um, some of the ways that he goes about life and his kind of no nonsense kind of de- demeanor, uh, I, I, I put in the way I play right. Um, but he was kind of written, he was, he was wrote that way. And, and, and Spencer Hudner, who's been with us uh, from the beginning after the pilot, uh, anytime he got a chance to write for Ray, you know, that's his ideas of Ray just happened to be kind of in line with uh, some of my um, values. Uh, but, but it, it, they, they just write them, write them like that. Right. Um, there are some 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 similarities. Um, obviously, the, the, the story, you know him being um, kind of an angry angry kid. Right. Uh, that was that was for me. Um, but it also was a great uh, you know uh, a great reason for him to you know kind of hone that anger and get to the teams and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then the reason for it was completely different because uh, yeah, his father being gone and everything. Uh, but there are uh, there are some similarities, but he's a much better man than, than 
<laughs> than I am. I, uh, you know, I just have been fortunate enough to, to, to play them and, and they write, dude, they, our writers are, are top notch. Yeah. Your writers are great. I was uh, just going to yeah. say, I mean, it's, it's not just you that the, those similarities exist. Like, uh, AJ's character AJ Buckley, yeah. is very AJ. Mm-hmm. It's like a caricature of AJ almost, but actually it's 25. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's 25 year old AJ is basically what that character is. Um, yeah, but just a bit, a bit, uh, you know, I mean, he's such a text. I mean, AJ is, AJ is a sweetie, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? And, and, and like, and he's really smart and, and, mm-hmm. and Sonny is a fool. Sonny ain't got him all. <laughs> no, no, he's so, uh, uh, no. so, you know, um, we all have our, our characters kind of like have a, a bit of us, mm-hmm. a bit of us in there. But, um, but, but because by virtue of, of Ray being like a mixed kid in America from that time mm-hmm. and in the area mm-hmm. he comes from, and then being in, the, in this area, like in the teens where, yeah, I'm sorry, ain't no black people. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's very few. Um, he's kind of a unicorn and that's mm-hmm. kind of the way I've, I've been in my life. When, when I started acting, um, when I came into the game, there were no mixed, there were hardly any mixed uh, actors on on television or anything like that. There were some in movies, and so when you're coming into a, a field and they're saying, "Okay, who are you going to replace?" and you don't look like nobody else, it, the, you can't. You know, they don't. They're like, "Well, no, I don't see it." So it was, um, it was a different kind of, it was a different kind of struggle because my friends would always say, "Like, yo, man, yo, ain't hardly no roles out here for black people, son." And I'm like, yeah. He, he said, man, if you look out on the thing, you don't hardly see no black people in the, in the breakdowns. I said, yeah, how many mixed people you see? <laughs> Just uh, a big head down uh, on that <laughs> one. Nope. Big goose egg, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But now like, you see that. That's what I'm saying. I, I, think, I think now we're all just mixing up because – Everybody knows, man, we're just Americans. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Look good, you look good. <laughs> I, I feel like if you're the kind of person that cares about that thing or about that at this point in life, maybe you should just get the fuck out of this country. Cause, yeah, you yeah, seriously. Like, should. seriously, man. Yeah. Like, we, we started this and the way it's evolved and stuff, like, you can't do it. Like, those guys, I don't know what the fuck happened with those, guy, those two dudes that shot the black kid. In Georgia? Yeah. Yeah, they're going but, over that case now. But it seems like, like, no matter what he did, I hate the way they always try to bring up the past. Like, oh, he was fucking smoking weed and doing petty crime. Like, so was I, motherfucker, at that age. I'm yeah. sm- I smoke weed every goddamn day. It doesn't mean I'm going to go fucking rob somebody. It also doesn't mean you can execute <laughs> me in the street. Yeah. Like, I feel like I, I've been reading a lot. I haven't said anything about this lately, but I've been reading a lot on social media, and, and even the people that are that are usually defending the shooter in this case are like no no nah, yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they they, like, they fucking nah, they track the, this is Trayvon Martin 2.0 like, like some fucking uh guy that was that wanted to fucking be a hero fucking ran out there and did some stupid shit I think on the, I think on this one if that cell phone vo- footage would have came out a little earlier they would have had these guys before oh yeah uh it was probably bungled by the department at that point but, but that's that's an embarrassment for our country that it took oh yeah public yeah. attention like look man right is right and wrong is wrong yeah i feel like i will say this you don't luckily you don't see it too much anymore and when you do see it you're shocked where you're like what the fuck happened there um rip those guys out of their houses and put them in jail immediately yeah and that's what they did you know ultimately but uh luckily i i feel you know i feel like you don't see it as as much or uh, anymore, partially too, because there's so many phones and rings and nests and zooms and all that stuff. Like, yeah. you oh, just can't get you away witness, with yeah. shit anymore. But I mean, just statistically, about I, it's it depends on which data set you're looking at. But 85 to 93 percent of all murders are committed by the same race as the victim, right? Right. So I mean, you don't you don't really see that shit very frequently. Yeah. But it is. I, I think it should remain shocking to us. And I'm glad that it is. It I'm, is, I'm yeah, glad, for sure. Like, I hate, obviously, it's sad that that happened and it's tragedy, but I'm glad that America reacts the way it does in a way. I don't like all the prejudgment yeah, sure. necessarily. Like, we, let's, let's let the court do their job and stuff like that. But uh, when it's something that's this obvious, I'm, I'm glad for the outrage. Like you, and I'm glad for people that wear it on their sleeve, too, because I can identify that person. Like, if somebody is in, 
outspoken fucking racist, I can just be like, oh, I don't ever need to listen to anything they say again. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's another fucking person that I never have to listen to again. I'm, I've am i been weeding them out yeah, for years, yeah. so that's good. Now, you yeah. being mixed, I mean, dude, you get to be doubly outraged. You yeah, know? when the cops show up, you can be if like, hey, black or white, you're, oh, you're excuse pissed. me, sir, my name's Neil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, that's, that's very nice to see you, sir. Thank you for helping me. I appreciate you coming by. This young gentleman right here. Yeah, can you get this uh, <laughs> Can you get this guy out of here, though? <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, I get, I get. Um, yeah, I mean, within my own family, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm from the South, so um, in, the, in the time I spend in New York and where my family is, and you know, like a, a lot of the mix, um, I, you know, I, I, I count it all joy, though, um, uh, because I have a very specific upbringing, and it's not this person's up, upbringing, it's not that person's upbringing, it's mine. Uh, and it's made me who I am, mm. um, good, bad, or indifferent. Um, so I try to learn from from every everything. Uh, with, with that situation, it's horrible. I, and I knew that people would try to formulate it as something else. Like they came up with the video with him walking through and saying, yeah, "I see he was trying to rob the 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 the, the construction house." Yeah. And then they showed the video of all those other people walking through the construction house. Yeah. And just literally looked in, walked around, and walked away, right. and went back on his on his run. Um. You know, and and I I was reading about how like they had that video, they had that video, and in the in the documents they like for one months said the video yeah. wasn't yeah. there, yeah, and one said that it wasn't there. So it's very you know it's disconcerting. But the fact that there's outrage, I appreciate I appreciate that because I think at the heart of America, you know, Americans are a very uh, interesting bunch because we're a melting pot of of people that and we're all you know you know messed up and we're all weird and we're all kind of crazy. It's, you know, it's essentially in, insane to pull all these different people together and say, all right, get along, um, which is the American experiment. Right? It is. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like um, trying to drive in L.A. I believe in it. It's trying to it's like <laughs> trying to drive because if you're driving in L.A., not only does the traffic suck, but you also have and this is not to denigrate the, the Asian community or anything, but you have a lot of 50 to 70 year old Asians that are first generation just came over here. Yeah. And they drove or didn't even drive like the, the females over there didn't drive that much from the Henderland and shit that came over here. So they're just now learning to drive and they're getting into their later years or they've driven in a country that has no fucking traffic laws for their whole lives. And then they come here to L.A. and they're like, it's like the, you, you mix them with angry white people. It's like, I've got, to get, <laughs> I've got to fucking get to Starbucks before the fucking thing closes. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. Like if you add all that shit well, together, it's just like dropping well, a grenade my, in the room. That's a big thing that I always get on people. I, I always say, you know, it's not about race. It's about where they come from and what their traffic laws are like. Oh, yeah. So the thing about America being this melting pot is that they come, we come from everywhere. Oh, yeah. And a lot of times their rules are not our rules. No, they don't give so a fuck about rules. So they're just going there. based on what, you know, they um, they grew up with. And, and you know, the learning curve is, is really sharp because yeah. people get really angry. They get so you know, angry. Driving I, I used to live London, in I, like, and you go. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. I used, I used to live in Oakland, and there's a lot of older Asian people that live there. And people would be raging out all the time. Like, look, man, this woman, first of all, she just learned how to drive. But she comes from a country where if you drive over a certain speed limit, they will pull you out of the car and beat the shit out of you. Yeah. So she's probably a little reticent to, to step on the pedal right now. You may want to just calm down. Plus, a lot of good sushi there. Yeah. A lot of great sushi. Great so, sushi in LA. Um, hey, let me ask you oh, about yeah. uh, Insecure. Uh, that is my wife's favorite TV show. Um. How do you oh, wow. how do you find the time, dude, to do Insecure and SEAL Team? Um, well, I'm really blessed at how HBO and CBS handles it. Uh, I've spent enough of my time not working mm -hmm. and just wanting to work to where uh, I don't need no sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I get this work. I'll find a way to get this work. It's like somebody was asking me, he was like, yo, is your gear, is your gear on the show really heavy? I said, you know what's heavy? Not working. Yeah. <laughs> so no, my gear is not heavy. It's really light, actually. And I love it. Um, I've been, you know, uh, I've spent enough time, you know, not having work and figure out, trying to figure out how to get it to uh, to be able to um, accommodate having a whole bunch of work. I said that I wanted to have so much work that I didn't even have a chance for any type of vacation or any downtime, yeah. and I was ble I was blessed with it. God is good. Um, I um. Uh, so before, um, the la this last season, mm -hmm. uh, it kind of worked out wonderfully. Uh, SEAL team would start to, to finish. And then 
pre-production on Insecure would start and I would go right into Insecure a few weeks later. So I would kind of shed the weight that I gained for, for SEAL Team mm-hmm. and uh, get kind of more cut and all that stuff, shave down the beard some and all that. Um, and so it just worked out perfectly. And then, so I was just on this perpetual cycle of work. So I worked like 11 and a half months out of the year. Wow. And then, but now, um, uh, Issa Rae, she had, uh, got really busy, so they couldn't go into production. So, so it overlapped. Um, but Prentice, Penny and Issa and all the, the guys over, uh, at Insecure, um, at HBO worked it out with SEAL team. They went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until they figured out how to get work done on the weekends mm. so um i would just shoot it on the weekends and uh so i prepare and do uh seal team monday through friday and then you know early saturday morning be in there for uh for insecure what's her story Issa Rae? everybody says she's a genius um and she's amazing to work for is that is it is it true yeah she's super smart dude she's like well she's much you know uh, Awkward Black Girl was the original uh, mm-hmm. series that yeah, she did. Yeah, YouTube series, um, yeah. Yeah, the YouTube series. And, you know, she came up with that. And she's just funny and smart. And she kind of gets it. She's real quick. Um, but so is everybody on this, that show. They keep me on my on my toes. A lot of people think, you know, it's so easy. That that stuff is really hard for me, um, doing comedy like like that and, and being on and hitting those beats. Marlon Wayans um, was one of the ones mm-hmm. who helped kind of, you know, affirm that mm. I knew what I was doing by, you know, I did a movie with him and the first day, it was my first comedy. I didn't know what I was doing. And I had to go in there and just add it with him. Um, and he's like, let's go. And, and it, and it worked out. Uh, but it's very stressful for me, um, especially with Chad. He talks so fast on this show and, and they don't, they won't let me slow down <laughs> because even <laughs> when I slow down, they're like, okay, Neil, okay. Anytime they have to do a takeover, they're like, Neil, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, this is non sequitur. Just an unending stream of consciousness that just it's just constantly going, and then it blurts out. And the way I play, the way Chad, a lot of people don't know about him, the reason why he talks like that. They think that um, you know, just because he's an ass, excuse me, uh, but he's a, he's a, he has a very high IQ. He's got like mm-hmm. a one sixty something IQ. So he's just so he's done with the conversation before you start. That's why he acts like that. And Issa and all those guys make sure that I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, and make the Jay Ellis all those. I mean, like if you sit in a room with them and try to like keep up, you'll get exhausted. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's just one thing after the other, especially one topic and then. Da, 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 and, yeah, it's, and it's one of my wife's exhausted. favorite shows. She she loves your character in that show, and uh, she's a, oh, she's tell a, her thank you so much. I will. She's in the other room recording with her bullshit friends, uh, <laughs> drinking broettes right now. <laughs> I can I can hear them screaming about wine or mayonnaise or something from the other. Wait, room. why is it wine and mayonnaise? Because <laughs> they're, mayonnaise. Is it cause they're yeah, white. Yeah, those two. Who knows? You want to you want to talk oh, about okay. you want to talk about something depressing? They the two of these idiots make a a wine video the other day, um, where they're just drinking wine backwards out of each other's mouths. Twenty two million views. That mm-hmm. is up to now on Facebook. Um, three what? yeah three takes on an iPhone, and I'm just like. Is this where we're at as a nation? That's yes, it. <laughs> it is. Right. Yes. I mean, look, I got hey, look. My wife, she found TikTok and dude, oh boy, like, there it is. Hours, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and I and I've done it too. I was just like, oh, that's funny. Oh, that's There's funny. a lot of yeah. funny. There's a lot of funny shit on there. If you can get past all the like. 17 year old girls that are trying to make sexy videos me like, get the yeah, fuck man. out of your house yeah. if you could just switch on stuff that's tagged comedy maybe i guess you can technically you could search for that yeah, hashtag but. but it's it's still little kids like i feel like there should be a an age app for that one yeah um you know switch it yeah. like instagram look once you're over 18 you can join instagram after 18 your tiktok count deletes like that's it of like all right cool no more here um yeah, I just the social media man, and nothing has pushed us further apart mm. under the guise of pulling us together than, than social media. How do you keep um, your kids away from it? Um, they didn't have phones until they were seventeen and sixteen. Okay. Went, uh, seventeen, yeah, seventeen and sixteen. Was there pushback um, yeah. of like, Dad, quit being an asshole? Like, dude, every, all of my friends have yeah. phones. I want phones. Yeah, there was pushback. I mean, pushback in the sense of, you know, my oldest son snuck a phone. You know, his friends would give him oh, old phones. Oh, did he have a burner phone? Yeah, he had a burner, bro. 
Let him watch see, the wire. That's what a happens. Cold piece of work. That is a cold piece of work. Oh, let me see. Oh, look, it's a great phone. Snap. <laughs> Bring it to my house again, and then you won't get TV for two months. <laughs> won't get nothing. And, 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 you know, I was an out of work actor, so I was there like. Yeah, you had nothing <laughs> but time. Yeah. You had nothing but time yeah, to yeah, watch him. Time. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I just taught him the value of um, human contact. I taught him that, you know, when I was coming up, the idea of success was people not being able to get in, tech, in contact with you. Um, their lack of access to you was was a, more of a signature of success. Um, my dad hates the phone. Hates it. Hell, man, if it would ring, he would lose his mind. So why would he want one attached to his hip at all times? Of course, now information is the way it comes when we need these things, and this, we are in the future. Um, but I, I just told them that they try to teach him the value in coming up with things on your own. And as long as you're watching someone else's stuff, as long as you're doing it like this, you're not coming up with your own thing. You're thinking about what they're doing and it's imparting its ideas on you as opposed to you sitting in a room with nothing but a pen and paper and trying to figure it out for yourself. Cause it's all about perception. Yeah. I mean, you, you get those kids with those, with those phones and they're like this. And then you sit them in a room with a piece of paper and they're just like, this is boring. Mm -hmm. But you get a kid that's like, you know, thinking, he'll be like, oh, okay, I'll ball it up. Basketball. You know? Yeah. And now he's just at least entertaining himself, you know, or him, him or herself. Um, so I, I just try to teach him the value of, of, of creation within himself. You know? That's cool, man. To try to that's cool. not get so sucked into that stuff. Yeah, you, you sound like a great father. And I'm being genuine when I say that. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> I yeah, day. I was kind of hoping but, hey, you would. Look, here's the I'll, thing. Well, go ahead. What you I was say? I was hoping you would adopt me. Actually, yeah, Dan needs. I want to <laughs> come live in that nice ass house that you keep talking about. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm not paying rent. No man. Um, <laughs> no way. No, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> well, um, I do these. Uh, I do these seminar. I, I I talk to these kids. I try to go to like uh, um, schools in Compton and mm -hmm. stuff. And I talk to the uh, and and this is the same thing that I I told my children. Um, and it's cool because they're like 16, 16, 17. And I said, and I always ask them, I said, hey, um, you guys remember when you were like 13, 12? And they're like, oh, my God. Remember how silly silly you were? And they're like, remember when you thought this thing and that thing? They're like, oh, my God, yeah. I, I like Hello Kitty and blah, blah, blah. Remember how silly that was? Yeah. Okay. Um, would you want to be remembered for that for the rest of your life? Like, would you want to be judged on that moment mm -hmm. in your life? And they're like, no, oh, my God, no. It was like, okay. So why would you get online right now at 16 and 17 and tweet something or yeah. Instagram something that you'll be judged for on the rest of your life? Like, do you think you're going to be the same person you are right now at 16 that you're going to be when you're 25? Or do you think you're going to be the same exact person and not at all? And they're like, uh, 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 they, they short circuit because they're like, I said, yeah, yeah, you are going to be different when you're 25. You are going to evolve. You are going to be smart. And you're going to look at 17 at 25 the same way you look at 13 now. So if you put... Be mindful of what you put on there because it may come back and bite you in the ass. It's like the opposite of Matthew McConaughey's Oscar speech. Like, <laughs> instead of being your own hero five years from now, you're, like, you're looking back five years like, motherfucker, yeah. can you believe I said that shit? I was my own hero, though, God damn it. No. Um, Neil, this is the point in the show we get to the drinking bro of the week which is someone who has helped you or inspired you become the person you are today. Who would you like to give the drinking bro of the week to? My dad. That's great. So one Brown. one day after Mother's Day, you give Drink Your Bro of the Week to your dad. That's perfect, Got it. isn't it? Yep. You know, because <laughs> Mother's Day, Mother's Day. You know, this Mother's Day, they get all the cool stuff. They get the flowers. They get the breakfast. Yeah. They get the, Father's Day. What do you get? Tie you get? socks. A mug. A yeah. tie yeah. socks. Yep. Some coffee. <laughs> it's the same thing dads get for Christmas. Yeah, it's it's same, pretty yeah. much. It's same Black shit. Rifle <laughs> Coffee. Drinking yeah. Bros 20 is that promo code yeah. over there. But yeah, yeah that's what it is. Black Rifle <clears throat> Coffee. That's it. Congratulations, Dad. Here's some coffee. And that's it. It's like, here's some more. Here's some stuff that'll keep you awake to make more money for the family, Dad. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to see you, though. <laughs> that's why they buy you ugly ties. Like, well, I'm never going to see him wear it. No. I'm like, I'm, I won't see this guy <laughs> again after work. Uh, luckily, so we don't unfair. have to wear ties to our job. I know. Yeah. Dude, brothers get treated so good. They get all the stuff. My wife, she made out like a bandit this year. I it, mean, like with the Mother's Day, like just flowers after gifts after this and stuff that like 
that was really thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Like stuff that she, like her inner self that she loved that she didn't even realize the kids knew about and cared about. I also sent them a text saying if they didn't make it special this year, yeah. I was going to kick them out the house. That's the, that's the, <laughs> that's the dad job. But like, hey, by the way, we're, take care of your mom. We're, we're a month out, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not taking that heat for you guys. So let's get on. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not. Cause she's not my mama. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, it was a pleasure cool. having you on the show, my man. Uh, one of the finest actors we mm-hmm. have. Check him out on SEAL Team on CBS and Insecure on HBO. Neil Brown Jr., thanks for being here, man. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate you. Yeah, buddy. Absolutely. For Neil, D'Anthony, D'Anthony Holloway, I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Drinking Bros. Good night, everyone.